Hi there, it's Rob from Oxfoot. Welcome to another Will It Deploy video where we try to automate the deployment of different technologies using Octopus Deploy. Today we're going to take a look at automating the deployment of an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web application, deploying to an AWS Ubuntu 16.04 Linux virtual machine. And we're also targeting Microsoft SQL Server for Linux. Finally, we're looking at using AppBear to build our application and Octopus to deploy it for a fully cloud-based deployment pipeline. Let's get started. This is the application we're trying to deploy, and it's called Random Quotes. We've seen it in previous videos, and it provides quotes as a service on demand whenever you click the big green refresh button. This is an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web application, and it's using Entity Framework to manage its database schema with migrations and provide database access. We'd like to deploy this application to a Linux virtual machine. So in the spirit of that, I've been working on it on my Mac. So if I jump over to JetBrains Rider, this is an alternate .NET IDE for doing development on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, and it's really great. If we take a look at our Solution Explorer, it's quite simple. We have a single controller, we have our Entity Framework context and migrations, we have a handful of model objects and a handful of views. One thing I would like to point out is our app settings. Here you can see we have a default connection string. Now this is connecting to SQL Server and our database is on a separate virtual machine. You can also see that I have two app settings app version and environment name. Now when I run this locally, I have them set to default values, but as I deploy through my environments, I want all these configuration values to change. Now this application is open source and it's on GitHub and you can find a link to it in the description below. So the big question is, will it deploy? Yes, it will. Let's walk through the solution. I have an Octopus Cloud instance running with a single project called Random Quotes. And I have two environments, staging and production. And you can see I've done a couple deployments. Before we get too deep into Octopus, I'd like to take a look at our cloud delivery pipeline. So we have our source code in GitHub and this is an open source project uh, and the repository is at octopus samples slash random quotes. And we have a link below in the description. So we have our source code here and we're working on a branch called Entity Framework. I recently pushed a commit that updated some titles. And then this was built automatically with AppBear. AppBear automatically detected my change and it built my web app, packaged it and pushed it to Octopus. And it's really quite easy to set up. If we take a look at our settings, we can see how easy it is to set up. So on the general tab, you can see that I've configured my GitHub repository, including the branch we're working on. If I go to environment, you can see that I'm using a Visual Studio 2017 build worker image. That allows me to build my ASP.NET web app. If we take a look at our build settings, you can see that we're using a custom script. The first thing that we're doing is a .NET publish, which will compile our web application and publish it to an output folder. The second step is that we're packaging our folder into a zip, and we're using the Octopus command line utility, or octo.exe. So we're calling octopack and just specifying the version and the path. And the final step is using the AppBear push artifact command to be able to push the build artifact so that AppBear can then integrate with Octopus. Finally, if we look at our deployment settings, you can see we're using the Octopus Deploy deployment provider. We specify our server details and then we're pushing our packages. We're creating a release for our project with a matching release number. And then finally, we're actually deploying that release to our staging environment automatically. Now we're back in Octopus, which will handle our deployment. Let's take a look at our infrastructure to see what we're deploying to. As I mentioned earlier, we have two environments, staging and production. And we have a single listening tentacle and two SSH targets. So if we look at our environments, we can see how this is structured. We have a single Linux server in our staging environment 
and a single Linux server running in our production environment. We also have a listening tentacle connecting to our Octopus server, and we're taking advantage of this to be able to deploy to our SQL server, and we'll see how that works a little bit later. I'll quickly show what's required to add a Linux server or an SSH deployment target. So it's very similar to adding other listening or polling tentacles. I'm simply specifying the environment, one or more target roles, and count. I've gone ahead and created two accounts, one for my staging and one for my production environment that lets me authenticate with my server. The other key detail that I need to specify is what version of the .NET framework that I have installed. Calamari, the Octopus Deployment Executable, is built on Microsoft.NET, and historically you needed the open source mono framework installed. But with the introduction of Microsoft's .NET Core framework, we are now able to bootstrap Calamari so that that dependency is no longer required, which is fantastic. So I've selected that here, and I have gone with the default platform of Linux, but alternately I could select Mac OS. I'd also quickly like to highlight that I have created two accounts. So here I've created two SSH key pair accounts so that I can securely connect to my Linux servers. And that simply just contains my username and my SSH key pair, one for staging and one for production. Alternately, I could have created username and password accounts, but in this case, I didn't. So now let's head over to our project and take a look at our deployment process. The first two steps allow me to update my database. And the third step simply deploys my website. So let's take a closer look. Our first step is an octopus package step. And we're using it just to unpack our package on the octopus server so we can acquire our database scripts for our second step. Our second step is to execute a SQL script file. And this is an octopus community contributed step template. This step is also executed on the octopus server, which is why we needed to unpack our package to make our SQL script file available for this step. This is a very handy step. I simply specify my database connection string as a variable and the path to my SQL script file. And that is the path from my previous step, just with the file name appended. And that's it. This allows me to update my schema and data as required. Check the description below for links to a couple more database focused will it deploy videos. Our final step is to actually deploy our website. And so this is an octopus package step that will run on our web targets, which is our Linux servers. So essentially here, I'm copying my package to my Linux boxes, which are SSH deployment targets. And I'm doing two things. The first is that I'm running JSON variable replacement. All my octopus project variables are replaced in my application settings. And we'll take a look at our variables shortly. The second thing I'm doing is to execute custom scripts. I have a post deployment script to configure the latest release of my web app. I'm using the ASP.NET Core Kestrel web server to handle my web requests, but I also have Nginx in front of it to provide a more robust hosting solution. Nginx is a reverse proxy and it provides a lot of richer features over Kestrel, but I could have also selected Apache or a number of other options. To set this up, I followed Microsoft's guide how to host ASP.NET Core on Linux with Nginx. This involved configuring Nginx and configuring a systemd service. Links to all the docs I used are in the description below, but I'd also recommend applying some DevOps and talking to your operations people or researching this further. My script here copies my web app files to a standard hosting directory and then restarts my random quotes web app service by the systemd utility system control. So that's it. That's our deployment process. Now let's take a look at our project variables. As you can see right at the top, I have my app settings and database connection string. So those will be replaced in my app settings.json file when I do a deployment. I build my database connection string from the various components, including database name, server name, username, and password. And you can see I have the appropriate values uniquely scoped to both my staging and production environment 
as needed. So that way, my database connection string is appropriate for both my staging and prod environments. Now let's head over to our overview, kick off a deployment and see everything in action. I recently made some UI changes and Affair detected and built those changes, created a release and deployed them to my staging environment. Now I'd like to go in and promote that release to production. So I'm simply gonna select deploy to production, review the release details and they're fine. So let's deploy. So our deployment was successful and it completed quite quickly. If we open a new browser window and just load our prod website, we can see it come up. I can click refresh to get some great random quotes. And I can see that my change, which was changing this title, is in place. So everything worked great. I'd like to summarize what we've seen today. We automated the deployment of an ASP.NET Core web app, including database updates and deployed to an AWS Ubuntu virtual machine with SQL Server for Linux as well. We built our app with AppBearer and it automatically created an Octopus release and deployed it to our staging environment. This was relatively easy to automate and configure for a fast, repeatable and reliable deployment. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below including a link to start a free 45-day trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments!